me is Andre. I'm an uh, engineering lead at Double Cloud. We doing the uh, we building the platform for real time analytics. And uh, Kafka here is one of our pillars. We built uh, as any real time analytic platform. We build it with a with a with a Kafka in mind. And since we providing the Kafka uh, as a managed way, we decide to share our knowledge, uh, share our expertise about how to manage. How to make it most cost efficient way, and how to tune the Kafka uh, in a cost efficient way. So uh, let's briefly recap what is the Kafka about and what is real time analytics about. Real time analytics is mostly about the uh, something uh, that streamed about some data that streams. So it's usually arrived in a small portions in a, a timely manner. Some events, some. Uh, uh, some uh, data that goes into your application or th from your application uh, for later analysis. And usually the real-time real timeliness here is the uh, is answer for uh, a question how, uh, how, uh, how big is the gap between the actual event's appearance first interaction with the data. So real-time uh, data streaming is usually about the very fast uh, uh, response from a data, usually in a matter of a seconds or even a milliseconds. The usual applications that's suitable for such kind of uh, analytics is IoT applications, uh, real time, uh, uh, like uh, uh, log analytics, maybe uh, advertisement models, etc. So this is something that happens all the time, and you need to analyze it as quick as possible. So that's why it's real time. So uh, let's briefly discuss what is a Kafka. Kafka is a, a currently a lingua franca for in the world of real-time analytics. It's a platform by default for any kind of such analytics. Kafka is a basically a message bus. It's a system that distribute event uh, from consumer uh, from a producer to a consumer. So it's allow you to connect a uh, producer and consumer, producer of event and a consumer of the events, and allow you to decouple them. So they're not connected directly, but connected via this backbone, which is a Kafka. So usually Kafka is responsible for high throughput uh, data uh, workload. It's usually uh, Full tolerant and uh, scaled uh, at least in the same region, and uh, and it's actually follows the event streaming paradigm, where you have decoupled uh, source and the target, and this source and the target is can be in a different application written different languages, but they connected via the Kafka. So Kafka is like a backboard here for any kind of uh, real time analytics streams. So uh, internally, Kafka is a relatively simple system. It can be treated as a kind of a database. And based on this design, we actually will be tuning the performance mostly based on this design. So usually Kafka lives as a set of a brokers. Broker is basically a host with a Kafka. Inside of a broker, we have a set of a part a topic. Topic is a logical entity. This logical entity groups the events in the uh, events of the same kind in the same uh, topic, that's why it's called topic. And inside of a topic, we uh, have so called partition. Partition is a uh, a unit of parallelization of a topic. So if you, you have a, a multiple, one topic with a huge volume of data, you can add more partitions. And these partitions is actually act independently uh, and can be produced independently and consumed independently. That's allow you to scale the, uh, the workload more easier. And uh, on application level, usually we have two main entities, which is a consumer and the producer. Con a producer is something that put data in a Kafka. They usually send the record to a topic and some partition. The producer can be either bounded to specific partition or can use some technique to assign partition randomly. And consumer is a similar thing, but with a, uh, but in opposite direction. Uh, when you run a consumer application, the consumer application read data from a topic from a certain partition. And actually consumer is also can be bounded in so-called consumer groups. Consumer groups is... Uh, something that read with specific topic and specific partition and store information about the progress of that read. So you can uh, uh, 
build a failover application. If something is broken, you will restart and start uh, from the last committed uh, you know, offset. So this is a basic building block of a Kafka. And based on this building block, it's actually quite important to understand how Kafka internally structure it to make it most, most efficient way. So let's go back uh, directly to our juicy part about our tips. And the first tips is actually bounded to this idea of brokers and uh, the idea of how clusterized database deployed usually. It's about networking. The Kafka is usually a backbone for your streaming. So it's uh, stream a lot of data. So data is moved from uh, your application to a Kafka and inside of a Kafka, it also can be moved uh, inside of a Kafka cluster, because Kafka cluster is usually a clusterized entity, which is means you have no one bro, not a one broker, but a multiple brokers for failover reasons. And there is to make it most efficient, you need to be network aware. What does it mean network aware? You need to think about the network topology of your application, of your event stream, uh, kind of upfront. So you design your event stream, not from the, uh, uh, application level, but from infrastructure level as well. So you need to know what is a networking here, in what even in which region you live, and uh, what kind of connectivity you have. Uh, so this is quite important because the cost of a network is uh, actually can be a significant in a Kafka setups, uh, especially if you set up in a cloud uh, environment such as AWS. In AWS, traffic is not a free. So you need to be uh, aware about what region your application deployed and your Kafka is deployed and how they connect. Usually Kafka is not lived on the public networks. It's not lived on, uh, 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 not exposed to internet, it lives in the private network. So you need to connect your application with the Kafka some, by, by, by some uh, technique. There is a lot of a technique how you can connect uh, entities from a private networks, but for Kafka, the best one is appearing because it's basically free for you. You have an application network, you have a Kafka network, and if your application can be deployed in the same network, and it's actually kind of reasonable to deploy with the different networks, to make a connectivity, you can appear this network. And that's why, and that's how you make the application uh, accessible, Kafka accessible to up to your application and not cost uh, any extra cost. But that's not a one, uh, not, not, not a single uh, thing that you need uh, to take and consider while you're developing the application, you also need to think about not just a network topology in terms of origin, but it's also a network topo topology in terms of a so-called rack. In most of cloud providers, rack usually currently is not physical rack as it was in the old days when it was kind of group of a service standard together. Currently uh, in most of uh, cloud providers, rack is actually about availability zone. So uh, why it's important for you to think about track awareness when you develop, develop your application, it's basically because of the cost. So if you take a look on the typical setup of a Kafka, a high availability setup of a Kafka with a multiple availability zones, with a multiple topics and, uh, and so on. So usually how it works, you have a cluster of a Kafka, on this cluster of a Kafka, you have topic zero, and this topic is replicated on a tree availability zone. You have one leader and two followers. And if you deploy your application in a availability zone, uh, a random availability zone, you have a probability to read data uh, from different availability zone, from different track. What it means, uh, by default, consumer application read data from the leader uh, of, a, of a group. So uh, in each Kafka cluster, each partition have so-called leader, which accept data and then replicate it to different uh, uh, followers. So consumer will be read from this leader. What it means that uh, you actually read data from uh, availability zone A and move it to availability zone B. And what it means for you in terms of uh, latency, it's actually a bit of extra latency. And also it's not just a bit of extra latency, it's also a bit of extra costs because traffic between a Z is not a free, it's cost for you something. So it's actually worse to think about uh, rack awareness clients or consumers. So we can set up a, a consumer to treat not from the leader partition, but from the partition which is closer to you, which is sit in same rack, 
or redeploy your consumer application to the availability zone where the leader is currently set up. But the moving of a consumer to the uh, following the leader is not an easy task because leader can be frequently changed. So it's maybe better to just uh, read data from the uh, uh, correct rack. In this case, you will minimize the hops between the availability zones, and that, and uh, in the meantime, you will decrease your price of a network. So you will uh, reduce cost of a network for just hopping data from availability zone one to availability zone three. The same can be applied also for a producer, but for producer it's a bit trickier because you can't produce data for a follower. You only can produce data to a leader. So in a producer, uh, on the producer side of application, you should basically follow the leader. But it's uh, in some cases it's reasonable approach to follow a leader. So uh, first thing to make the Kafka cost efficient is take think uh, thinking about the network topology and thinking about track awareness because this can uh, cut the cost significantly in terms of a traffic. So ne next thing that we need to take into consider when you uh, uh, scale your Kafka application is uh, thinking about batching. Uh, what it basically means when you uh, write, work with a Kafka, you work uh, with a so-called message. Message is a logical entity which you try to try to transmit from your uh, producer application to a consumer application. And on a Kafka side, you can write multiple messages, uh, multiple uh, uh, logical events into single message. This process called batching. And for a throughput uh, side of a thing, if you want to maximize a throughput, you can uh, play out with the batching, you can increase your batching size, and that uh, can increase your uh, overall throughput. The batching itself, it's not a silver bullet, you should adjust it based on your needs, because usually batching actually coupled with a more higher latency, because batching uh, means more data in the same uh, message and in the same message it could be uh, more newer data and more older data so uh, the freshest data can be kind of obsolete for the for the time that you collect this batch but overall if you are willing to maximize your throughput rather than minimize your latency maybe increasing the batch size is a reasonable option for you so uh, another thing that you need to take a consider with the batching size is a compression when you apply the batching in a kafka uh, this means that your each message is kind of big. It's like not uh, several bytes. It's uh, start measuring in the megabytes. And this uh, actually enabled you to uh, reduce your traffic cost once more by enabling compression. Compression here is kind of a, a tricky beast because compression is not a free in terms of application and the Kafka itself. So you need to choose wisely on what kind of a compression you want to use for your particular case. Uh, because compression here uh, is a trade-off uh, thing. You can trade your CPU to your network cost. If you have some spare CPU on the producer side, you can use, for example, GZIP, uh, GZIP compression type, and this will compress your data by a lot, and that is reduce your network bandwidth by a lot, and you will reduce your network cost by a lot. But if you don't have such option, and you still have to want to use uh, uh, the compression to reduce at least some of network costs. You can use, for example, LZ4. You can use the stable as a guiding for you to using an optimal compression. So applying the compression will also uh, reduce your uh, cost in terms of a network and actually can improve your brand width because actual brand width of uh, Kafka is bounded mostly for uh, raw bytes rather than messages. So the third tip that I wanted to share with you is about optimizing how you how your data is written uh, and how you utilize your uh, replication factors and your acknowledgement. In a Kafka, when you try to write something to a Kafka topic, you need to uh, receive an acknowledgement. Acknowledgement is basically say, yes, I'm stored this data in a Kafka. You can write to me a next message. 
And based on the settings, uh, you can use uh, no acknowledgement at all, which is mean you can lose some data in terms of, a, in, in case of a failover, you can use acknowledgement, which is one. Uh, if one instance of your failover group is acknowledge this message, then it's at least okay. Or you can use all, which is most strict way. You need to wait until all uh, your replicas on a Kafka cluster save this data to uh, proceed further. So this acknowledgement uh, things is actually uh, allow you to trade between uh, two uh, most critical uh, performance me performance uh, uh, characteristic of a Kafka latency and a throughput. If you want to build as 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 uh, as deliver your data as fast as possible, maybe waiting for acknowledgement is not what you want to do. Uh, maybe you're not as uh, strict in terms of a data consistency as you uh, for, for your particular case, but you need a latency here. Uh, so you can trade your durability to a latency. And also you can trade a throughput to, uh, to your availability by uh, reducing the uh, amount of uh, replicas. So your uh, machine would not uh, spend so much time to replicate data across the nodes. And this actually can increase your trade, your throughput. So basic chart, how you choose your uh, producer size, uh, you can use this uh, map as a guidance. If you want to increase your durability, like uh, like uh, ability to uh, survive a, a catastrophic scenarios of your application, like multiple nodes failover, etc., you should increase amounts of replicas. You should increase amount of acknowledgments that you should receive from those replicas. If you want to uh, uh, reduce a latency, then you should uh, reduce the number about amount of partitions and reduce batch size because batch size, a bigger batch size means you uh, accumulate uh, data longer and the oldest message in a batch is uh, has a lot the biggest latency but if you want to uh, maximize the throughput you should increase amount of the partitions to make uh, the parallelization as much as 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 big as possible and increase the batch size based on uh, because bigger batch means more utilized uh, network brand base and less uh, load on the coordination stuff. Uh, so this is a, a, a very nice chart for you to choose what exactly you want from your Kafka, from your topic. And all of this applic all, all of these uh, settings is actually more about not a Kafka cluster level settings, but a topic level settings. So you can adjust them inside of a cluster quite a nice in on one topic level. So each topic can be adjusted slightly different based on the scenario. So this is uh, about optimization of, of producer. You can use this chart for, for your guidance. So a next thing that is kind of uh, important for making your Kafka as, as efficient as possible is about decoupling of a processing. Inside of a Kafka ecosystem, there is such, such thing called Kafka Connect, which is a very handy tool to connect your Kafka with external storage. Here, as I have shown an example, is a click house, but it can be anything else. But there is a trade-off that you actually trading here. By putting the non... Um, uh, specialized uh, workload in your Kafka, you actually decrease overall Kafka performance and your Kafka cluster become less uh, uh, less tuned for your maximized throughput. So Kafka is actually, by, by design of this system, is more about EO bound process rather than CPU or RAM bound process. But adding the excessive workload for RAM and CPU can make uh, can, can, can round the, the, the stable and this can make your Kafka more CPU bounded installation rather than EO bound installation. And this can limit your throughput by a lot. What you can do here is externalize uh, CPU heavy or RAM heavy processes. So your Kafka be a more backbone, more uh, message bus rather than a processing center because Kafka is not well, very well designed for processing. But you can use same concept, same like Kafka Connect, for example, but just host it outside of your actual Kafka. And this externalized delivery, externalized supplier or consumer 
can reduce a cost of a Kafka by a lot because uh, once you externalize a CPU intensive process from a Kafka itself, this, this particular CPU intensive process can cost less than inside of this Kafka because the Kafka itself, Kafka Connect itself, uh, introduced some degree of extra uh, cost for just hosting this process. And if you host this process in a specialized environment, like using a specialized tool for delivery mechanism, like double cloud transfer or maybe Apache Flink, this can reduce your cost for both processing and say Kafka. This is actually a trade-off for you because once you externalize the delivery mechanism, externalize producer, you have more systems to maintain. So in, in, in if you have like ability to maintain uh, uh, more than one system, then it's like go to approach uh, because it's allow you to make your Kafka cluster as efficient as possible. So uh, this actually leads us for a last uh, tip that I want to share here is about uh, on which uh, uh, on which hardware is the best Kafka uh, best hosting Kafka. Since Kafka is kind of written in Java, it's uh, more or less portable application. You can host it on any kind of uh, any kind of processor architecture, and this processor architecture can be cast differently by a lot. There is so-called RAM-based processor. For example, in uh, AWS, we have Gravitons, and the Gravitons instances usually much cheaper than Intel instances. And if you instance is uh, tuned and it's not use any kind of external activity inside of it, uh, you can utilize this power of uh, uh, cheaper processor on your, uh, for, your, uh, for your needs. For example, if you're willing to increase uh, throughput as much as possible, you can uh, aim to use, for example, Graviton instead of Intel processors, on the cheaper end and use EO bound architecture. And this uh, is okay for Kafka because Kafka is not something that require a lot of CPU power, a lot of memory allocation, etc. It's just a backbone, it's just a message bus. So it's more about uh, input output rather than CPU. So you can use a Graviton. In some cases, just changing the Graviton or different kind of a processor can save you up to 40% of your cost. And uh, this save is not come with a drawback of uh, slower performance. You will perform very same. The latency and the throughput remain the same, but the cost can be dropped significantly. Uh, choose wisely what kind of architecture you're using. If you tune uh, Kafka uh, good enough, you can use the cheapest uh, processor on, on the market and you still receive same performance for your application, same throughput, same latency. So don't be afraid of a new, te new technology, new processor architecture, use them wisely and uh, on your on your behalf. This can sig significantly reduce the cost, uh, so use it wisely. Uh, this is all five tips that I want to share with you. It's uh, so I, uh, I I I want to thank you for attendance of for this uh, webinar. And if you have more questions, just feel free to join a Slack group and uh, feel free to ask a questions. We are Double Cloud providing managed Kafka services, so you can use our managed Kafka and. Uh, apply the very same technique to make maximize uh, uh, cost efficiency of your Kafka installation. And Double Cloud Kafka is one of the most cost efficient Kafka on the market. We, slight, uh, we, we can be a lot more cost efficient than, for example, manage Kafka in AWS or in Azure. So feel free to join us, join uh, our Slack, feel free to file a trial. And uh, uh, if you have any question, feel free to ask them. Yep, the, there is a question about sharing the slide. Yeah, we will share the slides. And I think we will share it as an article as well sometimes in, your, in our near future. So join on LinkedIn, subscribe to our LinkedIn, and it would be there. Our slides and an article based on those slides. Any more questions, guys? Don't hesitate to ask them. Uh, 
for batch online? Well, I would say mostly the same. The question is, is it still the same for batch on or online data? I would say some of them are correlated, but in a batch processing, you usually don't care about latency a lot. So you usually can use a maximized batching. So I would say uh, in a batch mode, you usually, uh, less strict in terms of a latency. So you just keep this aspect of a to optimization, but all other aspects is a kind of same. Uh, in a batch optimization, you still need to think about a lot of about networking because moving a lot of data is costly. Uh, you need to think about batch size, which is obvious for batching, yeah. The balance, uh, yeah, balance here is important. Any more questions, guys? Okay. If no questions, I think we can wrap it up and uh, keep in touch with us on LinkedIn. Uh, we will post uh, this uh, webinar uh, there and probably the slides as well. So. Uh, uh, keep keep in touch with us on a Slack or uh, on LinkedIn. So see you guys.